In this video, I'll show you how to use the Mashups program, which is one of the rich internet applications for language learning that was created by the Center for Language Education and Research at Michigan State University. As always, all the applications that are part of this suite are located at clear.msu.edu forward slash teaching forward slash online forward slash RIA. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sign in with an account that I created earlier. And then if you scroll down the page, you'll see the Mashups program. The Mashups program is a way to take all of the other elements that you've created using the other rich internet applications and consolidate them into a single page that you can share with students. So I'm going to show you how to create a mashup. So this is the mashup interface when you first open it. And we'll create a new folder for uh, the mashups for, say, a class that we might have. Now I'll call it ESL 101. And then if we scroll down, we can click New Mashup. And now we have an editing screen for our new mashup. And I'll give this mashup a title so I have an idea of what it consists of. And I'll select a background color for the page that will display the elements that are in the mashup. And I'll tell, I'll use this Dropbox to say where the mashup is located. And if you have an audio Dropbox, you can insert it using this drop down menu. I created this audio Dropbox in an earlier video. And any audio Dropboxes you create while you're logged in as yourself will show up in this drop down menu. So we'll just save that. So this is just the most basic, um, most basic element right here on the mashup, just this first box and filling that in. And we can take a look at what it looks like right now by clicking on the eyeball over here on the left. OK, so this is what it looks like. Just there's the color I chose for the back page, and there's the audio drop box. One thing that we can also do is if we don't like that drop box there, go back to the mashups page, and this button, the second from the left, allows you to position the elements on the screen in different places. So I clicked it and go back to this page, and now I can shift wherever I want that audio drop box to show up. So maybe I want it right in the center. And it'll save uh, it'll save the page as you move things around. You can see that over here on the right. So close that page. And now let's take a look. And now you can see that the audio drop box is in the center. And you can do that with all the elements you create for this mashup. So I'm going to create some text areas for this mashup. Maybe a heading. And we can change the fonts. And save that. Maybe I'll put some descriptions underneath the elements that I've added, such as the audio Dropbox. change the color of the fonts and let's
let's save this one as well. So now we can rearrange this box as well if we want. So say I want to position this these new text elements that I created. Move the header to the top of the page perhaps and if I don't like how lar uh, if I don't like this text that I created sprawling across the whole page, I can also change how big it is. So I'm going to go back to the mashup editing page and maybe make the width of that text box a little narrower. Maybe 300. This is in pixels. And let's take a look now. That's a little bit closer, but I might want to make it even smaller. Yeah, that's okay. So we can scroll down some more and see that we can embed elements into our mashup. So embeddable elements can include elements that you've created using uh, the rest of the rich internet applications. For instance, let's say we want to add a conversations application that we made. And in an earlier video, I made a conversations application. So we can go back to the Rich Internet Applications homepage, scroll down to Conversations, open that conversation, and down here it says embed this conversation into a web page. We'll click Get Code. And so that just copied the embedding code that we will use here. You just copy it and paste it. Hit save. And you don't actually need to know what any of this text means. The web page will translate it all. You just need to copy it and then paste it into the box. And let's add a text, a text area for our conversations application also. Now let's take a look at our page again. And we can see there's some stuff overlapping. So maybe we want to move things around now. So we'll go back to positioning the elements. And so here's the conversations application that we added in the blue box and our audio drop box from earlier. And that text is a bit sprawling, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to change exactly how wide it is. And we'll reopen the positioning elements. And now it's too narrow, so I'll make it wider.
maybe a little bit wider. And that's pretty good. So now we have a conversations application with a description underneath it and our audio Dropbox with a description underneath it. And just to give you an idea of other things you can embed, um, I'm also going to embed a YouTube video here. So back under Embed Elements, elements I'll create a new embeddable element. Call it YouTube Video. And then I have a YouTube video up here ready. And if you click on the Share button, there's also an Embed button under that Share button. And that'll open up a box with a block of text that you can just copy and paste into this box. Save it. Arrange it. We'll create a text area underneath it. Let's arrange our text area that we created. Let's also make it smaller. And now let's preview it, our final page, using the eyeball. So here we have our audio Dropbox and then a conversations application on the left and our embedded YouTube video on the far right. Last thing I want to do is I'll show you how to put a picture into the, um, I'll show you how to put a picture into this page. So at the very bottom, you can choose to put it in a picture and give it a label. And what you can do is you can either take images straight from the internet. So for instance, here's the Google logo, and I'm just going to right click on it and copy that image location, paste it as the URL. Or what you can also do is there's a thing called your snapshots account. And if you click that link that says snapshots account, it'll open up the snapshots ap application, which is one of the clear rich internet applications. And you can either upload an image directly from your desktop or from a file, or you can also take a snapshot from your web camera. So I'll do that. So I hit snap and save. And you can see that I've got a couple of these, but that uploaded it. And there's a URL directly underneath that image that I can copy and then paste right there. and I'll hit save. Now I'll go back and arrange these elements on the page. And you can see I have my photo there. It's getting sort of crowded. There's the Google logo. And let's move stuff down a bit.
So now that I have everything positioned on the page, I can preview it with the eyeball. I can see that everything that I added loaded. And it's all where I placed it. And if I want, what I can do is back here on the the yeah, the the mashup editing page, I can share it with others by clicking on the little box with the arrow. And I can send them an email. I could, I could send this mashup to them using an email at, using their email address that they use to, sh to sign up with rich internet applications. Or what I can do is if I go to the mat, if I go to the eyeball and click on my mashup, it'll open up my mashup for viewing and then I can copy and paste this URL that is up in the address bar and I can just send that to students and they won't have to sign in to see uh, most of the things that you've embedded. So that's how you create a, create a mashup using Clear's Rich Internet Applications. Thank you for watching.